Good evening, everyone. My name is Frank. If you're here from earlier, I'm going to welcome you again to the Institute for Astronomy. I'm very fortunate to get the opportunity to introduce Dr. Gary Greenberg. His topic is sand from the Earth to the Moon. Uh, his bio looks like cell biologist, author, photographer, and I think I'm going to add inventor of the 3D telescope, microscope. That's that's a and uh, most fascinating topic. When you see this, you can see it over and over. It's just as fascinating and entertaining every time. <laughs> Dr. Gary Gary Greenberg. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello. Is that, oh, this is going to a recorder? Gotcha. Okay. So I want to talk about one of my favorite subjects today is grains of sand. And now, a while ago, about the before the year 2000, uh, I thought sand was little, little grains of sort of brown rocks. But it turns out that's not the case. They're amazing little things. Um, and this is star sand from Okinawa. And they're little tiny protozoa that make little houses for themselves. These are tiny, itsy-bitsy things. These are really, really small. If you look at the beach, it just looks like white sand. So I want to tell you a little bit about sand when you look through a microscope and how extraordinary it really is. So basically, when rock erodes from ice and water and so forth, glaciers, they break the grains of crystals of minerals break off, and they go down the streams and rivers and into lakes and finally on the beaches. And as they're transported, they get more rounded and rounded. Uh, and there are incredible colors and, and, and different minerals that exist in these rocks as they break off. And they've traveled down to the beaches. And uh, most of the beaches on continents are actually made of quartz crystal. This is quartz crystal. This is pure quartz crystal sand. This is the kind of sand that's used to make computer chips or glass. Uh, you know that glass, uh, originally when they made glass, they found out that when sand melted, when they got, you know, during the Iron Age and so forth, they were putting a, a lot of heat in, and sand was sort of holding these fires. And it, these they found out that fire and sand makes glass. Well, this kind of this kind of sand makes really, really clear glass. And it also makes the computer chips that are running this computer right now, the silicon. Every beach is unique and amazing. This is the green sand beach from Hawaii, south from the south tip of Hawaii. And you can see here there's, there's some, oh, this is olivine. And you can see they're different, uh, in different um, amounts of erosion. This bit has eroded quite a bit. This little uh, crystal of olivine was just recently chipped off of its, of its uh, mother rock. And so you can still see the, the, all the uh, crystalline features. And as it gets rolled around in the, in the surf, it becomes more rounded and less angular. And this is uh, some red lava and black lava. And we have beaches here in Hana that is made completely of this lava, and some that's made completely of black lava. Um, so when you look at sand through the microscope, it's quite amazing. This is sand from around the world. This little heart-shaped grain of sand is from Lahaina. This is a little sea urchin spine. Um, this is the protozoa. This is this little uh, protist from um, Okinawa. But there's all kinds of minerals and colors. This is a mixture of sand from, oh, about a dozen or so places around the world. But they're all jewels waiting to be discovered. Now, this, for example, is just a little few grains of sand from Lahaina. And it turns out that, uh, that when you look at sand closely, especially in places like islands, uh, there's a lot of biological features in sand. So the bones and the teeth and the skeletons and the shells, they erode and make incredibly beautiful little bits of sand. So this is a sea urchin spine. That's a sponge spicule. It's the internal skeleton of a sponge, um, it's a glassy sponge. Um, there are bits of, bits of coral, micro shells like here and here, things from the volcano, bits from, uh, this is a crystal. Um, little shell fragments, tube worms, um, beautiful little shell fragment. 
So there's amazing stuff in Sam when you look closely. So on the island of Maui, we have an incredible mixture of both minerals and biological elements that are just absolutely fascinating. So this is a little tiny close-up of a bit of sand from Big Island, uh, so, sorry, from, from McKenna Beach, uh, Big Beach in McKenna. This is a sea urchin spine, and that's a little bit of one too. And there's a bit of mineral there uh, from the volcano, and you can see there, this is sort of called mor morphometric minerals. You see there's different kinds of minerals that have been compressed and squeezed together. And that's, those are little grains of sand. This isn't big rocks. These are tiny little things, and they each have their own character. There's a sea urchin spine looking straight on, um, and they have incredible designs. This is sea urchin spine like this. This is it looking sideways here, and when you look straight on, it's a single crystal, biological crystal, that makes that shape. Um, this is some sand from Hamoa Beach in Hana. And you see it has a, a uh, sponge spicule and a little bit of, of, of this is a foraminifera shell fragments, a lot of stuff from the volcano. Um, and uh, it's, it's a pretty amazing, and this I never did figure out what it is. I've asked a lot of people. So that still is an unidentified object of some sort. I don't know what. And this is the star sand from Okinawa. This is a bit of a sea urchin spine little micro shell. So sand has amazing biological stuff in it. And every beach is different. Every beach has its own character. This is a foraminifera or a foram, which is of this little protozoa I talked about earlier. This one is from um, Corsica, the island of Corsica in the, in the Mediterranean. Um, and also sand is in outer space. This is a micrometeorite. Uh, outer space is filled with sand. And we get, you know, we see shooting stars all the time. Usually those shooting stars are little tiny grains of sand. They're not big things. They're literally really small grains of sand hitting the atmosphere at about 20,000 miles an hour. And they just glow, and they make the, the, they make the air around it glow. And that's what you're really seeing. Because the sand is so small, you're not really seeing the sand. And then they, the, w they usually burn up because they're so small. But sometimes they'll land. And this, this is some, I'll show you some micrometeorites that landed in... Um, in the South Pole. And it turns out when you dig a, uh, a drinking well in the South Pole, evidently there's enough water down in there and, and the, the, the little micrometeorites collect there and you can find micrometeorites from there. And this is one, this is a stony ty uh, type. Um, I'm sorry, that, that was a, a metal type. This is a stony type and you can see it all got heated up and sort of opened up and you can see sort of strings of material there. It was molten. And some of these come in so fast that there are air bubbles inside and they sort of expand. This is, a, this is the inside of this sort of cavity. Um, and you're looking at actually into the inside of it. Um, let me see if I've got... That's another one. It turns sideways. You can see that as it comes in, the bubbles, see the bubbles burst there. It's burst out here. These are two bubbles sort of forming. And this is on a microscopic scale. This is blown up really large. This is several times, thousand times magnification. Some of them are, are, are crystal-like, and the crystal shapes have almost been burnt away. And I want to just say, you know, one thing when people ask me, you know, when they see my pictures, they say, is that what sand really looks like? And I just want to show you that in the world when you see things, what it looks like depends on how you look at it. So this is some grains of sand using reflected light. The light is reflected off. And I'm going to show you the exact same grains of sand in, in, in transmitted light. Whoops, in transmitted light. Now look at that and that. They're actually the same grains. But you get different information when you put light through them or you reflect light off of them. So it shows you that what you see depends on how you look at things. And that's particularly true with something like this. This is a grain of sand um, from the moon. And this is, this is with one of my uh, 3D light microscopes. And you can see that some of the grains have colors in them. Some of them have different colors. Some of them uh, are reflect, others don't. Um, looking with a scanning electron microscope at the exact same grain of sand, you see incredible detail in the surface structure, but you don't see sort of the luminescence and, the trans and, and some of the other properties uh, of the sand. And here's the same grain of sand with an X-ray microscope 
where you're looking through the grain of sand. And here you're seeing things you couldn't possibly see from the inside. So it shows that what you see in the world depends on how you look at it and the instruments you use to look at it, the point of view you're coming from. Um, this is a single grain of sand from the moon. And one of the main form, in fact, the main form of erosion on the moon is uh, micrometeorite bombardment because it's been bar bombarded for four billion years. So the surface of the moon is kind of powdery. It's, it's, it's going to be continuously bombarded. There's all kinds of glass particles there. Um, some of because of the uh, meteorite bombardment, a lot of heat and pressure squeeze the different grains of sand together and make kind of a conglomerate of different bits of grains of sand that have actually by pressure and heat have been welded together from the moon. These are more grains of sand from the moon. And you can see some of the grains of sand from the moon are glassy and different colors of glass. Because what happens is all this bombardment, the glass gets shattered and there's little bits and shards of glass everywhere. And some of them are really, really small. And uh, it makes moon sand very dangerous to breathe in. It gets in all kinds of stuff and it's really dangerous stuff. It's caused a lot of problems for the astronauts. Um, some of them are larger droplets of, of, of glass because the micrometeorites meteorite, the hit and they sort of um, melt everything. They go up into the air and the little bits of glass are formed in the air as little globules and then fall, fall slowly back down to the moon. There's green ones and there's red ones and various different colors. That's iron oxide. Here's a grain of sand that was probably four billion years old. Four and four billion years ago, yet it has not rounded or eroded at all. There's a little bit of, of, of erosion by um, solar wind there. But you can see the, the shape of the crystal is still originally there after four billion years. So just a heads up, I just came out with my latest sand book. Came out this month, The Secrets of Sand. Uh, you can go to your local bookstore if we had one um, and get it. This is my first book on sand. So now there's been two books on sand. So, and I'd like to end with this with great poem by William Blake. To see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wildflower hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. If there's, are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, yes, I was looking at the grains of sand that are on the moon, and of course you see them in different colors. Yes. Uh, do you see the same thing on the moon? Do you see You know, the interesting thing is, just like in the Earth, when you look at the beach, it looks beige or white, and you don't see the colors. You need a microscope to see it, and it's the same on the moon. Now, there, I there was an incident, uh, incidents in Apollo 11 landing where there was this orange soil. Soil is the wrong word. They reported it as soil because there's no soil on the moon because soil means there's biological a activity in it. But there was some soil, there was some orange uh, rock uh, 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 sand. Uh, but that was the only one that looked colorful. Usually it kind of looks grayish color from uh, a, a grayish, brownish color. When you get in, in it with a microscope, all of a sudden you're resolving these things you couldn't see otherwise. So microscopes show us th the hidden fabric of things in the world we can't normally see. We were looking at anywhere from um, a couple hundred times to a thousand times, something like that. You don't lose the color. You have to get in closer to see it. So for example, it's a matter of resolution. So um, uh, imagine uh, when you're looking at a television screen and there's just a gray screen, OK? If you go up close with a magnifying glass, it's red, green, and blue. You're not seeing the red, green, and blue. You're seeing gray. It's the same idea. The resolution's too small, so the brain just melts it all together. The same with a, a printed piece of paper. If you look at a great, a, a, you're not seeing the yellow sand and magenta dots that it's made of. You go with a telescope or with a microscope, you do. So we see the underlying, you know, we see what's really there in a much finer detail. I don't know about right terminology. Are these, are these uh, optical telescopes? Yeah, no, they're optical microscopes. So they go, optical microscopes typically go up to about a thousand times magnification. Today's electron microscopes go up to millions of times magnification. Uh, you can see, and today, 
you can see an individual atom in a microscope. You can full frame an individual atom. That's how good microscopes have gotten uh, with computers and lasers and, uh, and, and the new types of elect uh, what are called aberration corrected electron microscopes. You can see individual atoms and molecules and all in 3D. Well, I understand there's some places in Australia and in Florida uh, because uh, Ford started making Stanford glass for his cars, and I forgot the name in Florida. St. Petersburg. There's a place in Florida that's really, really, pu that really pure, crisp, you know, the, the solid white, the clear looking quartz crystal. If you look at that, at that beach like that, it's white sand. You don't, it doesn't look clear, obviously. It looks white. Uh, it looks like very, very white sand. And that really pure stuff is what makes the, the silicon uh, wafers and the really good glass. I'm not sure about rain. You mean rainbows in the sky? I don't think sand has to do with rainbows in the sky. Uh, rainbows uh, uh, are, are caused by the light, the light from the sun comes into every droplet of water and it refract, you know, the water acts as a, as a prism and it refracts and it makes colors on the back of the drop of, 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 of water and that reflects forward to you. So that's what gives you the color of a rainbow. You're each, each droplet is, a, is like a prism. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Good. Thanks.